In this video, we are going to look at a reagent rack for blood bank tube testing. Before I go into what all these different reagents are, I just want to lay down a few ground rules that we adhere to in this laboratory. Uh, the first one is that the, react needs, the uh, rack needs to be taken out of the refrigerator and the reagents need to be brought up to room temperature before they can be used. This usually is about a half hour. Uh, another rule is <clears throat> that uh, this, the reagents are put in a certain order. So we have four of these racks in our lab and it doesn't matter which one you pull out, they will all be, all reagents will be found in the same spot. Uh, the last uh, rule that we adhere to is that all reagents must be facing forward at all times. Okay, uh, so the way uh, the blood bank reagents are, are uh, re uh, arranged here is that we have clear reagents, cells, clear cells. Now, I'll go in and explain what all of these different reagents are for. Okay, for forward typing, we have anti-A and anti-B. These are clear antisera. Anti-A is always going to be blue, and anti-B should be yellow. Next to that, we have our anti-D, which is just a clear color. And then we have our uh, RH control, which is also just a clear color. Behind that, for our reverse typing, we have our uh, A1 cells and B cells. Now, we know that uh, you know, there are other uh, antisera, which are in the front. Uh, there's maybe anti-AB. And of course, there are AB cells, there are O cells. But in this laboratory, we just keep it uh, with a, B. Okay, behind that, we have um, here what's called gamma enhance, and you probably may know this more commonly as LIS. So this is a potentiator, and uh, not to be confused with PEG, polyethylene glycol. Uh, they serve a similar function, but they have different features. Um, Next to that, we have our anti-human globulin. Now, in this case, we are using polyspecific anti-human globulin. Uh, so, on that note, don't confuse polyspecific and monospecific with polyclonal and monoclonal. Polyclonal and monoclonal refer to the production process of antisera. Polyspecific and monospecific refers to what type of antibody or what those what the antibody is uh, geared towards. Um, so in this we have poly uh, specific which is anti-IgG and anti-complement. Now if you were to be using monospecific you would have either anti-IgG or anti-complement. Now one thing about this reagent uh, we are using a clear reagent but uh, I think probably most facilities are going to be using a colored reagent and the, that color is oftentimes green uh, because it's very important to be able to tell um, when you have uh, added reagents to your tubes because you know things can get kind of exciting and confusing in the blood bank lab right so uh, you know all different steps measures different kinds of measures are taken to ensure that uh, testing is performed correctly Okay, behind that, we have our um, screening cells. Now, in this lab, we're just doing, we do cell lines one and two, but there are uh, different cell, you know, you can do three uh, is also common. And over here is where we have the uh, check cells, or maybe also, may I'll be called, also called Coombs check cells. Um, now, when it comes to using reagents, uh, you know, when we look at our antisera, it's just a clear liquid. Now, of course, we always want to mix our reagents uh, before we use them, but it's especially important when we are using uh, reagents with cells because you can see here that on the bottom are red cells and um, on top is kind of a clear liquid. So before we use, uh, especially uh, cells, 
we need to mix them. Now we don't shake these because you know these are cells in here and we might somehow damage them. We don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and shake this um, or tilt this until on the bottom see there's still some cells stuck to the bottom there. So I'm going to keep going until they're all gone. All right, now before you actually do your pipetting, it's very important that you not only mix the bottle, but you mix the dropper as well. So I always do go up and down a couple times with the dropper before I go and take it and pipette the cells, or the, any reagent really, into the tube. Uh, when it comes to pipetting reagents, um, just one more thing. Uh, the, the rule in blood bank is that you always pipette clear reagents or liquids first. Now I say liquids because in blood bank testing, you know, the basic uh, idea is that you are combining uh, plasma or serum or antisera with patient cells or reagent cells. So it's very important that you always pipette clear liquids or reagents first because if you pipette cells first, it's kind of hard to tell if you've put in your, you know, the other reagent or the other liquid. Um, so uh, that's all we have to say about uh, reagent rack.